I'm going to welcome our guest, Coralie McEachran. Now, I will tell you, um, I was super excited to learn that you were going to be a new columnist in the magazine. Um, and I shouldn't be this excited to talk about sex, but I am, and I don't know why. So we're gonna break that down today, right? Cause you're also a therapist, so maybe you can help me understand. Why am I so excited to talk about this? I think there's a couple reasons, but I'll let you diagnose me, okay? Um, the main thing is because I think that so many women are in different journeys. Where they are with sex, either they're not having it, Maybe they're having too much of it, if that's a thing. Um, maybe they are making the decision not to have it and they're getting ready to go venture back out in the world and so much has changed. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to this conversation. So first, you know, just tell me a little bit about how you landed um, in this field. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm laughing, but no diagnosing because you and I are in armchairs together, <laughs> sisters together. Um, and so we get to be collaborative and just talk, I which is it. lovely with sex. Um, so for me, if you can imagine, I moved a lot growing up. I think I moved four places by the time I was 12. So that meant adopting, that meant being a chameleon a little bit, learning how to adjust to different environments. And my parents have a very strong marriage and bond. They're actually celebrating, I think, their 50th anniversary next year. Oh, and they're so, probably having a lot of sex. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Whatever it takes to keep the bond going. <laughs> but um, I, I have one best friend from childhood. Besides that, it was starting over each time. And so I think I was like, once I just meet my life partner, like, I'll be good. And so it started from a place of, if I just know everything there is to know about love and sex, I'll be good. Or maybe I just learn about it before I ever do it, and then it will all work out. And so that's not exactly how it, how it happened, but, or, you know, of like just working out because you read about it. But that was the intent of, let me just learn, and maybe I'll feel safe, maybe I'll, have opportunities and really like a, a knowledge is power kind of hunger there. Okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna jump right in, okay? Sure. Um, complaints. Can we talk about complaints that you hear from women about sex? And if there's any fellas in the audience, just plug your ears. No, we're kidding. We want <laughs> you to hear this. We need you to hear this. But talk about some of the complaints that you hear from women. Yeah, so uh, for women or folks who identify as female, Complaints that I hear a lot can range, you know, a variety of different issues. It can be anything from pain related to sex, usually penetrative sex, but it can be a variety of things. Um, it also may include like desire discrepancies. One partner has a higher level of desire and the other partner has it much higher or much lower and that's usually where you see an issue is when partners have different levels of desire because if they have the same level there's really not an issue um, sometimes women may also have body image issues and stuff from societal conditioning or even ideas about what I'm supposed to do how I'm supposed to act in the bedroom and then another one that I see with having a lot of different roles being the one to hold, you know, kind of the manager role of the household or being a mom or maybe doing more of the household chores and working full time, that a lot of people are tired. And so trying to think of like, how can I fit in this thing that feels or seems really important? And also I'm stretched so thin as it is. Hmm. Okay, so different appetites for sex. I can see how that might be a little bit of a problem. Yeah. Um, what are some words of wisdom that you give? I mean, because I mean, at the end of the day, what does that look like, right? You know, somebody wants to have sex every day. Somebody wants to have sex a couple times a day. Um, I've heard the gamut, right? So what sort of advice do you give to try to help partners get on the same page? Yeah, so I can say a brief bit here, but like in the therapy room, it isn't necessarily me giving advice, but helping partners come to their own wisdom and their own meeting in the middle of what's possible, I would say some of it starts with expanding what sex is. Maybe I have an appetite for touch. Maybe I need to be cuddled. Maybe I need to be held. And so we have different ways of kind of filling that need that we have for connection. And sometimes it is sex, but sometimes it can include um, anything, you know, ranging from kissing, touching, holding each other naked, and really being creative 
and kind of smashing whatever expectations of what it has to look like mm. to something that can work for both people. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, one last question that I have as it relates to sex, and we'll have to leave some cliffhangers because if you really want to know all that I want to know answers to, you've got to follow her column in Today's Woman magazine each month. Um, but tell us what do you think are some of the things that are happening in the bedrooms with Today's Woman now? Yeah, I think that Today's Woman has a lot more, a lot more knowledge and a lot more permission to be able to have pleasure in the bedroom, that her needs matter, and also starting to get words and vocabulary to be able to talk about that, to say what she wants. And if she doesn't know yet, that there's resources here at Today's Woman or resources with her girlfriends that she can start to find out and that her pleasure matters. I love that. Our pleasures matter. Our pleasures matter. All right, well, it is time for us to wrap up and take a break. Um, but on the other side of this break, we're going to meet with Jean West, a dear friend of mine, and we're going to talk parenting. Parenting today, parenting now, and how we're making it through. <laughs> 